Because it's it, it can, it's actually through Office 365. One note's free. One note two note All right, so we just graphed. I think this is our first or second rational function. One of the two. I think it's our second rational function. Let's uh, look at an inequality question. So this will be continuation from this problem. So I'm going to take this x minus 1 squared over x squared minus 9. Oh, that's not it. was x minus 1 whole thing squared. All right, we solve inequalities by first graphing and then figuring out is it above or below the x-axis. So we just spent time graphing this f of x function. And I want to know when is f of x less than 0. So I just replaced that expression with f of x. So do I want above or below the x-axis? So I want below. Do I want on the x-axis or strictly below? Strictly below. Strictly below. So we're mainly looking at the frowny part in the middle of the graph. I'm not going to zoom in to the top pieces because they're all above the x-axis. So we want to be careful. We're not taking all of this. I'll use the highlighter. So I want to skip that point right there and take this part of the graph on the left and this part of the graph on the right. So are there any questions about that idea? So I'm skipping the x-intercept. I'm taking the two pieces below the x-axis. Now I have to name all those x-coordinates, and this is going to be two intervals. So we're going negative 3 up to 1, and then 1 to positive 3. So there is the two intervals where this is below the x-axis. So again, at 1, we're going to skip over 1 because it's on the x-axis. And our problem said less than 0, not equal to 0. The other thing to pay attention to, the vertical asymptotes are negative 3 and 3. You're never going to include those in your interval, no matter what, because those are not in the domain of the function. So you're always going to exclude your x values for your vertical asymptotes. So let's look at a backwards question or an inverse question. I'm going to write down a graph, and we're going to figure out where in the world does this come from. And it's going to be a rational function. So the most important things to pay attention to are the x-intercepts, the vertical asymptotes. Those are the two most important things. We'll also look at the y-intercept as well as the end behavior. So those four pieces make up, uh, those four properties make up the graph. And I'm going to switch over to graph paper. So we're going to be graphing values from negative 5 to positive 5. There's an x-intercept at positive 5, a y-intercept at negative 2, another x-intercept at negative 2, a vertical asymptote at negative 5, and there is a horizontal asymptote y equals 2. Now the graph itself, I'll graph that in blue.
and there's another vertical asymptote of positive 2. So our x-intercept at negative 2 is a bounce. So that's our graph. So I will help you set up the basic form of this rational function. So I see two vertical asymptotes and two x-intercepts. So x-intercepts appear as factors in the numerator. And vertical asymptotes appear as factors in the denominator. You also have to consider crossing and bouncing. There's one crossing x-intercept, there's one bouncing x-intercept, and there's one crossing as in vertical asymptote and one bouncing vertical asymptote. So you have to pay attention to which one's crossing, which one's bouncing, as to if it's even or odd power. So write down the two factors that'll be in the numerator and the two factors that'll be in the denominator. So you got all the information you need right on that graph there. So this is a little bit tricky because I use 2 and 5, or negative 2 and negative 5. I reuse the values. So if I look at x-intercepts, I see two x-intercepts. One of them is x equals negative 2. The other one is x equals 5. You want to be careful because when you turn them into factors, x equals negative 2 is factor, uh, a factor appears as x plus 2. So it's always the x value that makes your factor 0. Which one is, uh, should be an even power? Is it, <coughs> is it x plus 2 or x minus 5? X plus, two. x plus 2 is a bounce on the graph, so it could be a higher power than 2, but I like to start low. No reason to use the 26 power if 2 works. And x minus 5 is odd, so we'll just leave it to a first power and not put it to the third or fifth. So any questions on the x-intercepts? Now we're going to move on to the vertical asymptotes. So there's two vertical asymptotes. They're already written as x equals. So we got x equals negative 5 corresponds to x plus 5 as a factor, and x equals 2 corresponds to x minus 2. Which one has an even power? Bx plus 5. So which one has an even power? So I'm looking for bouncing. So it's the x minus 2 factor. So x equals negative 5 is going to be a cross. So it can either be a first, third, fifth, or any odd power. So let's put this together. So our rational function could look like x plus 2 squared times x minus 5 divided by x plus 5 times x minus 2 squared. So with this, the two types, the cross and the bounce, um, what, one second, x minus 5, never mind. So the most important thing to remember, your x-intercepts are in the numerator, your vertical asymptotes are in the denominator. So that's basically the only information we used off the graph so far. There could be another factor, a constant factor, it doesn't have any x's in it. So there could be 
an A out front of this. And we can think about N behavior is one way to get this A, and the other way to get it is Y intercept. So we can go either route. Uh, let's go the Y intercept route. So Y intercept, what is the Y intercept from the graph? Negative two. So that means R of zero should equal negative two. So I'm just reading that right off the graph. When X is zero, our Y is negative two. And now we'll plug in zero into this expression. So we've got zero plus two squared times uh, zero minus five divided by zero plus five times zero minus two squared. So we've got two squared times negative five over five negative two squared. So two squared cancels the negative two squared. What do these fives cancel out to? Negative one. Negative one. So there's going to be negative one A equals negative two. So you can tell that A equals a regular two. So we think this is our rational function. So we've checked everything other than end behavior. It's the only thing that we've learned about rational functions we haven't looked at yet. So given this rational function, I want you to write down the end behavior. So you're going to throw out all the low powers, in this case just all those constants. So tell me the end behavior. <laughs> 